there are different forms of energy that we need to talk about. The first two are listed here, nuclear and chemical. Nuclear energy is anything that involves the unstable nucleus of an atom. So if the nucleus splits, we call it fission. If two small, two small nuclei fuse together, it's fusion, like in the stars. And this unstable nucleus can decay as alpha particles, beta particles, or gamma rays. And remember, gamma rays were pure energy. Now, chemical reactions are when the atoms themselves will bond with other atoms or when atoms that are already joined together split. So if we create new bonds, those bonds will absorb energy. If we break the bonds, energy will be released. So food and fuel have chemical energy. Okay? When we have food that's cooked for us, and we eat it to get the energy from it, we have to break the bonds in order to get that energy. Here's our next two categories, heat energy, sometimes called thermal, and mechanical energy. Now heat energy or thermal energy is defined as the internal motion of atoms. So within the substance, how quickly are the atoms moving or vibrating? The more motion they have, the more heat energy they will produce. Now we measure heat energy with a thermometer. Temperature is the indicator of heat energy. And we can also get heat energy through friction. When we take two objects and rub them together in opposite directions, we're going to create heat between those objects. Mechanical energy is when an object is moving. Now don't get this confused with this internal motion that's happening. The energy of a moving object is the entire object as a whole is in motion. So work is happening. Remember that work is force times distance. So as long as there is a distance that this object has traveled, and a force that made it travel in that direction of movement, work has been done, the object is moving, so mechanical energy is present. So the more force or the more distance I have happen on an object, the more mechanical energy I will have. Now, electromagnetic energy is a very important form of energy, and it can be broken down into three different categories. We have light, magnets, and electricity. Now, notice that sound is not listed here. Sound is actually classified as a mechanical form of energy, which we just talked about. Light travels as photons or as a wave. Magnets have a magnetic field and electricity travels as electrons. Now, this light, when we're talking about the electromagnetic energy of light, we're including all parts of the electromagnetic spectrum, not just the visible light that we are using to see with, but all of them, from radio waves up to gamma rays, light is part of this electromagnetic energy. Each part has a different range of energy. So gamma rays have a lot more energy than a radio wave. Now, magnets, because they have this magnetic domain where all the electrons are lined up in the same pattern and create poles, we have a field that's produced. And these, in this field, this magnetic field, by definition, is invisible lines of force. Now, these lines of force increase in strength as you get closer to the poles. So the closer I get to the North Pole or the South Pole of a magnet, the stronger this magnetic field is going to be. Now, electricity travels as electrons. 
And we know that we have static and current electricity. Both of these involve electrons. Static electricity is when the electrons don't travel. Static means to not move. Current electricity is when the electron travels through a circuit, like in our home. The energy will vary with voltage for electricity. Now, the forms of energy that we talked about, the five forms, can all be in one of or two states. They can either be in potential energy state or they can be in the kinetic energy state. So a form of energy is how that energy is used or stored. Whether it is being stored or used is determined by its state. So gravitational potential energy it's just one form of potential energy that we'll talk about. And it means that the object is at rest or stored. Kinetic energy means the object is in motion or in use. Now, we have two formulas here. Potential energy is mass times gravity times height. Mass is in kilograms. Gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared on Earth and height will be measured in meters. When you multiply these values together, you will get a joule, J-O-U-L-E-S, joules. Now, the important factors then for potential energy are mass and height. Kinetic energy is mass times velocity squared over two. The mass is still going to be measured in kilograms. The velocity will be in meters per second and kinetic energy, just like potential energy, is in joules. But the difference is that kinetic energy is dependent on mass and velocity. We'll use these formulas more in class.